Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So on today's video, I'm gonna go over an OBD2 scan tool for your Toyota and your Lexus vehicles. This new one I'm reviewing is exactly like the one that I reviewed before, but this one's a landscape version. It's a little bit bigger and it has its own battery versus the one that I reviewed on my last few videos for the same vehicles. We'll go over this one. It should have the same exact features, but it screen's a little bit bigger and you can see more on it. So stay tuned. <music> So here it is, the landscape version of the same tool. Right here, side by side, you can see they're basically about the same as far as screen size, I think. This one's just bigger as far as the unit size. It looks like the viewable screen is about exactly the same. Uh, supposedly it does exact same thing as the portrait one as far as software and everything. The only difference is the OBD2 cable right here is an actual serial port or parallel port here that plugs in and is removable. The other side is the exact same standard OBD2. So this thing also comes with a battery, so it's a little bit bigger and heavier than the other one. As far as setup, it's pretty much the same setup you go through. You basically just turn it on, connect to your Wi-Fi network, then go ahead and do all the updates and just let this thing update. After a couple minutes, it should update to all the latest software from the server, and then you could plug it up to your vehicles. In addition to doing Toyota and Lexus vehicles, you could actually buy additional software from their store. If you want the same scan tool features and options and all that for other vehicles like Hondas, Dodges, they've got basically every single vehicle that has any kind of diagnostics is available on this. So for the Lexus 2IS, the plug for the OBD2 is right here in the middle, right above your brake pedal. You can take the cover off and then just plug that thing right up and then have this thing ready to go. Once you plug it in, the system is going to auto detect your vehicle. So let's go through and just get all the information, get your VIN number and pretty much pull up the system and the program for this thing. So once you get into this screen, you wanna go ahead and just set your area for North America or wherever you're at, and it'll automatically select which pin you have. So we have the 16 pin DLC right here. So it goes through the normal menu, just like in text stream. So we got other, we don't have radar, we have two wheel drive, and then we pretty much get all this information pulled up for your vehicle. And just like on my other videos I showed you, pretty much this thing just loads up all your health report. So it's scanning all the, codes and everything on the modules to see if there's any issues with your vehicle when you plug it up. So one of the things I noticed that this version, the processor is much faster because everything seems to be reading much faster than the old one that I was using before. This is definitely a lot faster than the real text stream coming off your PC also. So once you get this information in here, you could actually go through and email this whole report to yourself, especially if you have a bunch of issues or codes, and that way you can view it on your computer and on your screen and check everything later. So once you're done with this, you pretty much have to go into each one of these modules and just kind of click through, it's gonna end session. And then you can look at all the different features like the special, the actuator test, the data stream. So right now I'm in the ECM or the engine control module. You can go freeze frame. There's no free frame. You can read the data stream. So right now I can go ahead and go in here and look at like my air conditioning, the air fuel ratio, the idle, the lambda, uh, which is the air fuel ratio coming off of your O2 sensors right there, the atmospheric pressure, the ambient temperature. So we could look at that. Let's see what we could see here. So it's showing 93 degrees outside. So you could watch that. You could run your car and see what that changes to. You could select multiple items to see at one time also. I can go ahead and look at the catalyst monitor. It's just enabled, so that's not even anything that's reading. Special functions, let's see what's under special functions. So you can look at your O2 operation. Banked engine. So we're gonna see all the readings in your O2, your voltages, your engine speed, 
and just monitor all this stuff to see what it's doing. So if you want to troubleshoot your O2 sensors, this would be a good place to start right here. Check your evaporator system. So it just kind of gives you the instructions. So the next thing we want to go to is customizable settings, which is where most of you guys that have this launch or want this launch want to see what's going on. So in here we have all your normal stuff like your door locks, your illumination and everything. And a lot of you will probably want to deal with your illumination or your lighting, right? So you go down to light control right here and then your DRL settings. So this is where you can set your DRLs on and off. On these HC motions I have on this car, if I turn that on, everything's gonna start flickering like crazy on the beam. So this is the only way you could turn that off and actually have aftermarket headlights without everything blinking all over the place. But you can also set all your different sensitivity settings and all that in here also. So over here in your power window settings, you can go in here and set different options for your power windows also. So in here you can do the auto down, auto up with your keys. So the key auto up and auto down is actually enabling your key cylinder out here. You could close and open your windows using your key, but the problem with the IS is you have to pop the cover to actually get to your key, so it's kind of pointless. And then the wireless up and down. So this is where you hold your lock button or unlock button for two and a half seconds. A lot of people, when they first get this car and they have a key fob in their pocket, they don't realize this. They actually end up going outside and all their windows are down because they happen to have sat on their button in their pocket. And this is where you could turn this feature on and off also. So under door lock control, this is another thing that a lot of you guys can adjust, especially to your liking. Most people that have this car Car have it on basically the shift lock where when you put it into park it unlocks the door when you put it into drive it auto locks the door I actually have it set for speed which is kind of what the manual transmission comes with because they don't have a park and drive obviously so you have to wait for the car to get to 13 miles an hour to lock and then when you stop and turn the car off within 10 seconds if you open your door over here this thing automatically unlocks all the doors. After 10 seconds, if you open it with the car off, it only opens this door and it leaves everything else locked. So the one thing that I'm seeing as annoying with this thing is to get to the different modules, it makes you run this stinking health report every time. I don't know how to get out of it. Because if you hit this right here, it just takes you to the actual launch tools options. If you go home, it goes back to this screen and this is just all the information on the actual thing. It doesn't really do anything as far as trying to get to all the modules. At least on the other version, I can click on different modules and get to them. But here you have to go through this thing and then from there you actually just click on different modules or different things on the side here. For example, we're here now, so I'll just go ahead and hit TPMS. If I hit it from here, I think under the check mark, it goes to that. But as far as having a separate menu for it, it doesn't have it. So here under special functions is where you program your TPMS. So you could do the ID registration right here. When you hit the I right here, the information, it will load up all the notes and the instructions on what you need to do. If you were doing this yourself, make sure you have all the codes on hand and then that way you can easily program it really fast because you only have a certain time limit once you start it. Signal check is where it actually checks all your different sensors just to make sure everything's reading correctly so right now here's all the different codes that are there for now cannot read so these must be the codes for my other set that you can't see from here so to register new ones you actually just click on the id registration it'll go through this whole wizard and it'll tell you how to go and then you hit ok and it's going to communicate so you could program a primary set or a secondary set right here where it asks you so if you go to the main set and then you'll go through the registration process by hitting OK. I won't do that here just because I don't want to mess with anything. So to navigate back to the ECUs, you go back here again. So this is where you actually, for this one, is basically the menu, the diagnostic trouble code. So you want to go ahead and kind of check other things. If I want to see my combination meter, which is my dashboard, I can go here and I can read the data stream. 
So right now I can read like the engine RPM, the fuel input, the ODO, which is the odometer, and hit OK. And then it'll show because I'm running idle right now with the AC on at 700. So it's showing 700. My fuel input is 118. So that's right there. So that's must be going up to maybe 200 or something to give you the actual range. And then the trip ODO. So this one, I think is that might be the button press for the ODO. That's what it is. I'm going to check the vehicle speed meter and see what it says. Nothing. So you can actually sit here and monitor it. Look at the region units. So right now it's miles per gallon. Let me go back to the engine RPM. Hit that. Let me see the engine RPM. Let me click on the graph. Right now I'm revving, so yep. So you can actually monitor this thing over time. So you could do that as a data logging. So I went through the actuation test for the cluster or the combination meter. So in here we can test the different buttons or the different things right there. So like the speed, I can go ahead and test this different miles per hour, I believe. So we'll go here, we'll go under no data monitoring. And then I'll go to 160. So right now it's all the way up to 160. I'll go down to 120. So my thing's a little bit off. Go back to 80. So 80 is a little off to 40. So it must be a little bit off from when I changed the colors on these things. Zero is right there, so zero is correct. So in here you can actually test everything else, all your different indicators, all your warning lights. So this thing's very useful if you have to test all your lights to see if it's working or not, or if you have any issues, maybe someone took the bulb out or whatever. Like lamp indicator. I could turn this thing on, and that's flashing the high beams. I'm in the temperature thermostat, so right now I'm going to hit high. And it went all the way up to hot. Put normal. It's going back to normal, and then I'll put low. It goes to low. So this is another calibration thing. So a lot of the lighting and functions of this vehicle and a lot of the newer vehicles are in the body control modules. So we can go in here and see what we can test and we can monitor in this system also. So we can do actuation tests, pull up all the different things. So we could do the trunk, the hazards, the security horn, taillight relay, door locks, headlight cleaner if you have that, intrusion power, step power, dimmer signal, headlight relay. So let's see for the headlight. So we can see what we can do in here. So you can turn the headlights on and off in here. So right now the headlights came on and they came off right there just from this system. So I went into the hazards so I could turn the hazards on and off from here. So it's on. So I don't have headlight cleaners but there's a headlight cleaner option. I can turn that on. It's going on, but we have no headlight cleaner. The wiring and harness might be here, but the actual device is not, so it's not gonna do anything. So next thing I'm in is the wireless buzzer. I'm gonna see if it comes on. It does. So that's just the sound of you actually unlocking your door. So there's also the smart access. So that's your keyless entry system. Let's see what we can test in here. So you can test all the different transmitters locations and everything that's detecting the key. Here's where the special feature is also. I'm assuming that's where your functions for actually registering a new key. So you can go ahead and register the classic way, the new way, the customized setting. You can erase all your codes and you can just do just the communication to the device. 
So this one is if you were to put a new one in, you'd have to handshake this thing. And then the communications check. So you could select different. So these are all the different devices that detect where your key at. You could test all that stuff. So I'm in the ABS menu right now for all the testing. So in here you could test the cylinder, you could run the motor relay, you could do the buzzer. Let's see what the buzzer does. So that's the sound when you're on ABS or traction control. Next I'm gonna go into the slip indicator and see what this does. I'm gonna turn the slip indicator on. And the slip indicator is that little VSC light down here when you lose control or you spin out. Then down here you could test the different solenoids for your ABS. So the front right, not monitoring. So if I turn that on, you could hear it. But overall, this thing's a pretty good device. I think it's like $100 to $120 on Amazon or eBay. If you guys want to check that out, go check out the links down in the description of my video and you can see how much this is going for and you can go ahead and order yourself one if you need it. You can see right here all the different updates it's asking for once you have it plugged in. So right now, no updates on this thing available because I upgraded it all already. Hey guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video on reviewing the horizontal version of the launch tool. As you can see, it has all the features of the vertical version that I've reviewed in the past, except it's a little bit faster and it costs about the same. So if you don't already have one, go ahead and pick this one up right here if you need a scan tool for your car. If you have any modern Toyota, Lexus, or even Honda or other makes and models, this launch tool is a must have to diagnose, scan, and do just normal stuff for your car and also lets you change options and features that you may or may not know that you could do. If you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Turn on bell notifications to get notified every time I upload a video. For all these different projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I want to thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.